Now, let's go over our demo and let's work with Workflow Foundation. Okay, I'm here. Uh, I will use the Visual Studio 2008 and I will create a new project. Here, I will create using C Sharp and here we have this type of projects workflow. Here we have many kinds of, as I said, I have a sequential and a state machine. I will create a sequence, sequential workflow console application. And I will call it WF Mr. Boo Demo. I will keep the default folder and OK. So that's the area that I have to work with a workflow. First here is the designer where I can build my workflow. If I click here and press F4, I can see in my right some properties I have in the workflow. I can create event handlers when the workflow is initialized or completed. And here I have my activities. I will collapse this and we can see we have two two kinds of activities. The activities built in Windows Workflow Foundation version 3.0 and Windows Workflow Foundation version 3.5. The difference the first set was built in Framework 2.0 and now there's new two ones in the Framework 2.5. I have many types of activities. I don't we don't have time to see all of them in this lesson. So let's choose one and let's work with a code activity. The code activity maybe is the simplest activity. It just execute uh, some amounts of code, and I can create event handler here to the event handler execute code. I will click twice, and I will print a message in the console. Console point right line, and I will write the message. Hey folks, this is my first workflow. And now I will execute. I will go here, debug, start without debugging. And here we see the message. But okay, how can how can it be executed? Now we are gonna see another file, program.cs. This is what this all this code was generated by my template when I chose uh, workflow console application it, it comes with my template <coughs> here we have this guy the workflow runtime maybe it's one of the most most important um, most important objects to work with workflow foundation the workflow runtime manages all the instances of workflow is with workflow runtime you can create instances of the workflow and let's understand now what what is that? What is the instance of workflow that I have said sometimes some before? Here we see my workflow one dot cs, okay? And here is the structure of my workflow. I just have a code activity. And now, if I can, if I want to execute this workflow, I have to create an instance of this workflow, and that's what I do in this line. I declare a workflow instance and I just say hey workflow runtime create an instance for me create a workflow for me which workflow ah well workflow one it's my kind of workflow then I just start I have some code here for now it's not important let's say region not important for now and region in the future lessons we understand this code so okay I will execute again I will put a breakpoint here and I will start with the bug so see my workflow will be created here if I press again it creates workflow execute and ends my application so now let's create a more advanced workflow I will delete this activity. Now we will use another 
activity and if else activity. Probably if you build a workflow in your software, you, you will have a decision. How can we create a decision here in Workflow Foundation? Using the if else activity. As in C Sharp or VB or any other program language, if you have an if else, you have a condition. So now here we have two kinds of condition, and we will see that in a moment. First, what are we doing? We will check the age of the user. So I will create here. I will create. I will click with the right button, view code, and then I see the code of my workflow. I will create a property here. Public int age, and I will use the new kind of properties in the C sharp 3.0. I have a property age, and here in my if else I will check for this age. I will create a declarative role condition. To condition. What is that? It creates a XML file with my condition. I just click. It, uh, here and here new condition and I can I have IntelliSense here this point a this point h less than 18 that's my condition it says here it's valid and I have a preview here <coughs> I'll click OK and I will drag two code activities inside the branch so if the condition is true it will execute the branch 1, otherwise the branch 2. And I will change the name, code activity under 18. And here, code activity under over 18. OK, I will generate the event handler and console.write line u. R. That's under 18. And then I will print my age, this dot age. And I will generate the other event handler. I just click twice. Now I just paste the message here. And I change that's over 18 and I preserve the rest so okay how can we how can I pass now the age I'm back to my program dot CS and I will create a dictionary a string and objects and I will call it parms now add a parameter Let's call it age. Must be the same name that I put my property inside my workflow. And let's say 23. And now, in my create workflow method, I can pass the sparms. Sparms. Now it will automatically bind the age with my proper age. And if I execute again, you are 23, that's over 18. And if I change here, and I run, you are 10, that's under 18. So that's how we create a very basic workflow. Let's go to our presentation again to our presentation and that's it thank you for choosing us and i see you in the next lesson bye